Okay, so we're now going to derive an expression for the speed of sound through a medium. You'll see that the derivation is relatively similar to the derivation for the speed of sound on a string. Okay, so what we're going to start with is a piston here filled with air. At the moment, there's just an external pressure pushing it in, so just like air pressure, and we've got an equal and opposite pressure pushing this back out. So it's now in equilibrium. What we're going to consider is a length of gas here with a length V delta T. Now the reason we're choosing that V delta T is that V is the speed of sound in this medium. So if we do compress it, V is the speed at which that compression travels through the medium because sound, as we said before, is just a compression wave. Okay, so we start with our undisturbed gas here. A stands for this cross-sectional area. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compress the gas. So we apply an additional force, delta P A, on the area, on the gas here. So that causes these gas molecules inside to all start moving with the speed V X in this I direction here. Now in this time delta T, that compression affects the gas down to a distance V delta T from this starting position here. And so now we do not have forces in equilibrium, so we've got a larger force pushing in than the force pushing back out. For this to hold, delta T does need to be small. We are considering small increments. Okay, so now what we can do is use our impulse momentum equation. Impulse is equal to the change in momentum. We'll start by calculating the impulse. The impulse is equal to the force times the time. Now this is the resultant force. The resultant force is due to this unbalanced pressure here, the delta P. So force is equal to area times delta P. And then delta time, we've got our delta time here. And this is all going in the I direction. Okay, but from before, we know that delta P is equal to minus B times the change in volume over the initial volume. So that's minus B. Now the change in volume we said was minus Vx A delta T, and the initial volume was just the Va delta T. So the A's will cancel out and we'll end up with B Vx on V. So this gives us that the impulse is equal to, just having a look, we've got A delta P delta T, so we've got A and then the B, Vx on V, delta T, I. And we know that impulse is also equal to the change in momentum. So the change in momentum is just the mass times the change in volume. The mass of the gas is equal to the density of the gas times its volume. And the change in its velocity is the Vx, I minus the zero. So that's rho V, Vx because the initial volume was the V A delta T. Here's the V X and there's our I. So now what we can do is just equate these two because of impulse. So we've got A B V X on V delta T is equal to rho V V X A delta T. Almost all of it cancels out, the delta T's, the V X's, the A's, and we end up with V, the velocity of the sound in the medium, is equal to the square root of the Young's modulus, the bulk modulus, over the density. So V is equal to the square root of the bulk modulus over the density. In general, we've got that the velocity of sound in a medium is equal to the elastic property of the medium, in this case the bulk modulus, in this case the tension, over the inertial property, which in this case is the density, and in this case it's the linear density. Okay, so the speed of sound actually depends on the temperature. Now using the equation that you, we've just derived, can you think why it would be dependent on temperature? You don't need to derive this, we'll derive this in a minute, but can you just write down a reason why the speed of sound would depend on the temperature?